everyone thank you so much for joining me today I hope you're having a wonderful week this video will be dedicated to the tea leaves readathon which I co-hosted with my friends Hillary Sarah and Sophia we are all part of the tea leaves book club where we read and discuss a book every two months and you're always welcome to join us The first reading prompt I decided to complete was to read the group book, just to make sure I read it on time. That book was A Lesson in Vengeance by Victoria Lee, a witchy, sapphic, dark academia. I'm now 133 pages in. The first chapter sounded very promising. We don't know yet a lot of what's going on. We only know there has been a death and the main protagonist feels very responsible for it for some reason. There are a lot of spooky vibes with descriptions of these haunted halls still cursed by the past and everything and we also get to hear a little bit about the curse of the Dalloway Five so it's clear that something is going on something is troubling these characters but I also feel like a lot is left for interpretation which usually I do like also, the main protagonist, Felicity, didn't seem to be very likable, which could be done on purpose, of course, and usually when we have a very morally grey character, those are usually my favourites. I think they're also the most interesting ones, usually. However, this is pretty much the halfway point of the book, and to be honest with you, I'm still not sure about <laughs> what the plot is supposed to be, and I'm also not sure if these characters are intentionally non-likable or if it is just me that doesn't like them because I don't really care about them so far. <laughs> Felicity doesn't seem to have any personality other than feeling guilty about what happened and also being rude to people. And then the love interest, which she came out of nowhere and I don't feel the chemistry so far. Her only trait is to tell Felicity that she's not guilty. So nothing is really happening so far except for some very pointless conversations, at least up to this point I don't see what they're all about. Um, and we're also not getting any answers to anything, so I'm not sure if the reality is that nothing is happening or if I'm just too distracted because I don't care enough about the characters or the plot. But unfortunately, just this book went completely downhill for me. Obviously, that can still change. I mean, we still have a little bit to go. Um, so we'll see if it gets better, but I don't, <laughs> I don't have much hope so far, unfortunately.
it is absolutely mandatory for me to show you these cupcakes that I got these Halloween -y cupcakes are you ready? <laughs> oh my gosh they are adorable look at this <laughs> oh I can't it's too cute we have this one and then this one that looks like a mummy hello how amazing is that? And then I have another pumpkin and then this one, which I just love because it's so creepy. It has an eyeball. You can see that. <laughs> oh, I love these. I really hope they are as good as they look because I'm in love. <laughs> Now that I have reached what is called Dairy the Second Interlude, I feel like this is as good a time as any to give you a little update on how I'm feeling about this book. And I have to say, it is a little hard to explain <laughs> because I am enjoying it to some extent. I never feel bored. This is a very long book and I feel like it does a good job in keeping you engaged. I think Stephen King knows very well what he's doing when he's presenting these characters and making us feel for them. There are a few friendships here that just... I almost teared up at one scene with Bill and Richie. It was so incredibly cute because they were being very vulnerable with each other after this terrifying thing has just happened and the way they feel so comfortable but also a little embarrassed to share their fears with each other is very cute and I can picture them perfectly in my head as this very innocent kids who are going through such awful events and are trying their best to protect their friends as well and that whole dynamic between the kids is definitely my favorite part of the book so far. I think it feels so genuine, it feels so real and I love how each one of them has a very unique personality. And of course because the characters are basically the center of this story, I am enjoying it quite a lot. A few things have freaked me out as well because if you're not familiar with this book, you have this villain called Pennywise or rather it is known as It because it is this clown that proceeds to transform into your biggest fears. It's a little more complex than that, but that's the general idea. Anyhow, sometimes he shows up as a clown, of course, and whenever that happens, I want to stop reading. <laughs> Because it is too creepy for me. I can see this book not being as scary for a lot of people. It really depends on your fears, as always with horror, I feel like. So that is working pretty well for me too. I feel like whenever there's a scene coming up in a very small or closed space, I know that something is about to happen. And the narrator of the audiobook also does an incredible job in portraying all the different voices. So it feels like I'm there experiencing all of this 
and having to face Pennywise in front of me, which is something that I just do not want to do. <laughs> so it is effective in that sense. However, there are a few red flags here that are making me feel very uncomfortable reading this book. Obviously, authors are allowed to write about awful people. Of course they are. And there is a lot of violence here, especially domestic violence. There is a lot of homophobia as well and fat phobia. And obviously, authors are allowed to portray that in their stories. I feel like it is valid, of course, but I have to say, some scenes here just feel a little too much for me, especially when he's not talking from the perspective of a character. It just out of nowhere begins describing some people's appearance in a very disrespectful way, especially Ben, because he is a fat kid and I feel like Stephen King always needs to make sure that the reader knows that because he keeps using just very offensive words and just expressions that are not necessarily offensive but they are so repeated like he feels the need to tell us that his belly keeps juggling whenever he does anything at all and I don't see why. I think it is extremely offensive, extremely disrespectful and I just do not like that storytelling method because it's not necessary. And the same goes for Beverly. There's this very big need of always describing her body in a way that <laughs> again just makes me very uncomfortable to read about um obviously it is again valid to put that in books it doesn't mean that the author believes what he's saying but i feel like there's also maybe a limit i'm not sure it is always a bit hard to explain isn't it but it's just some descriptions of the characters i feel like they are so unnecessary we also have racism and sexism and everything and those are big trigger warnings i feel like because especially because they come out of nowhere there are certain contexts where it does make sense i guess especially um this might be a minor spoiler if you'd like to skip it but especially for instance when it comes to beverly's relationship with her father he's very abusive towards her and obviously being an abusive sexist disgusting person he would say some awful things to her so it makes sense that it is on text and i get that stephen king probably wants to portray a very realistic personality of this man towards beverly i guess so it would make sense but then that's only an example i feel like it is repeated over and over again in situations where we are just describing the environment we are just describing the characters so why do you have to use such specific language? I'm not sure. I don't I don't like that. I'm not a fan of that because there are certain scenes that keep me so engaged in this story and so interested to find out what's going to happen next and then suddenly we have this sentence out of nowhere that focuses so much on a specific characteristic of a character which we already know about. You're not bringing anything new to the table. So why would you insist on writing that and with such offensive terms sometimes? Um, I don't know, That's. I think that's the only thing really some issues that I have with it when it comes to the writing. I think the pacing is fine because once again it can get quite slow since we get introduced to a lot of characters and their own perspectives but I do think it works. It's a way for us to care about them which is working again for me. Um, it's just the writing sometimes. I don't know. I don't like the tone in which he presents certain things to the reader I guess but other than that I have to say I am enjoying it to some extent <laughs> it's very difficult to explain my thoughts on this book i feel like because it makes me scared to read it sometimes i'm almost way too scared to keep reading it which makes it for maybe not an enjoyable reading experience or at least not as enjoyable as it could be however that also means it is doing what it is supposed to so 
there you go those are a few of my thoughts so far i obviously still have a long way to go and i need to finish this book by sunday the 24th because i will be having a live show with kira discussing all about it and i think she's almost done with it i believe but since we are of course here for the tea leaves readathon i thought i could also use this book for another of our prompts it fits a lot of them so i'll see once i finish it and um, for which one i'm going to use it because honestly i think this is the only other book that i'm going to be reading for the readathon i don't have a lot more time to pick up some other books i am currently reading a few but i don't think i will finish any of them on time for the live show so we'll just have to wait and see but i'm gonna try and make some more progress because we still have a long way to go I recently visited one of my favorite bookshops in Lisbon. I haven't been there for some time and I decided to just walk by and see how it is. I knew that they had done some changes recently so I just thought I would come by and visit it and it remains just as beautiful as I remembered. I didn't even have an idea of buying books really, although we all know it is always a risk when you enter a beautiful bookshop. <laughs> And of course that's exactly what ended up happening. I ended up buying one book and that's because I have been looking for a beautiful edition of this book since I can remember. All the other ones that I have seen previously usually I don't like because they tend to have the movie cover which I'm not really a big fan of. So when I saw this edition there and it was only one copy all by itself <laughs> I thought I cannot believe this. I I've been looking for this for so long, I didn't even know this edition existed, so I thought it was perfect, it was destiny. <laughs> you know when you walk into one of those large, pretty and old as well bookstores hallways and you just find the book you've always been looking for, it is such a nice feeling. And so I found this stunning edition of Gone with the Wind by Margaret Mitchell. This is of course a big classic. I have seen the movie years ago, I barely even remember it, but it is a book that I've been meaning to read for a long time as well. And this is, I believe, the Alma Classic edition. Yes, it is from the Alma Classics collection which I do own some other books of. I do own some Bronte novels in this collection that my mom gifted me. Ever since then, I completely fell in love with these and I didn't even know this one existed. <laughs> but look how beautiful it is. It is so autumnal as well with this like mustard yellow color and all the flowers and then of course the mansion in the background. It is absolutely stunning. If it is anything like the other books that I own from this collection it should have some pictures at the beginning or at the end oh here's the entire collection here it is oh my gosh that's so exciting I think I might want all of these <laughs> it's just so pretty and it smells amazing as always and oh my gosh it is just perfect I love it so much even though the lettering is quite small um in case that's something that usually you're not a big fan of, I thought I would just let you know because it is quite small if you can see that um, which usually I don't like I have to say but I can forgive it you know because it is so beautiful and I have been looking for a stunning edition of this book for so long and now I finally have it and it is so exciting I have no idea about when I'll be reading this one however speaking of big books a lot of you have asked me and Kira if we are going to keep up with our big books buddy reads and I have to tell you we probably are so if you have any ideas or suggestions that you'd like for us to read with all of you then please let us know and this one could be an option I'm not sure if Kira is interested in reading this one <laughs> and we do already have some ideas for next year so that's exciting but you know it is definitely a possibility because it is a huge classic but speaking of big books of course I'm also here to tell you that I did it. <laughs> I finished it by Stephen King which doesn't seem 
true, honestly. Um, I did have a lot of mixed opinions about this one and of course I already had the live show with Kira discussing everything about this book or rather not everything really because I feel like there's so much you can say about this one with it being so long and with a lot of characters and plot points so of course there's a lot more that we could have said but I think we discussed the main topics and also the main issues that we had with it um, with that being said, my main one, and I believe I briefly mentioned this previously, was definitely the language that Stephen King uses to describe some characters. I think it is very unnecessary. Um, it is extremely fatphobic, homophobic, racist and sexist as well. It has a lot of trigger warnings when it comes to all of that, so just be aware of that if that's something that bothers you. It certainly bothered me. I was very uncomfortable reading a few of these scenes. There's also a very extremely painfully uncomfortable scene to read when it comes to the kids towards the end of the book that I really, really hated and I don't know why Stephen King put it in the book and how it got through the editor as well. I don't know what happened there, but it was so unnecessary and it brought literally nothing to the plot. So it was just very strange and very painful to read. I honestly could not do it. I don't think I would have read it if I was reading the physical copy, but fortunately I was listening to the audiobook, so I just put it on, you know, two times speed or more than that even, because I just, I couldn't handle it really. Plus I do think a few chapters are not necessary or relevant to the book, not to the plot nor the themes it explores. We also mentioned that I feel like we both think that if this book had been cut in half it would be the exact same story without all of those unnecessary and very problematic scenes. So I do have a lot of issues with it. I also know it is a lot of people's favorite, so if you love this one, I'm very happy for you, but unfortunately for me, it had a lot of problems. I haven't read it, this one yet. I feel like it is between a high two star and a low three star for me, so it is between that, I would say, because there are a lot of things I enjoyed as well. I liked the friendship between these kids, I liked particularly the childhood chapters, except for that last one, which was just... But I did like the themes of this book, how it explores where fear comes from and how there's both an inner and an external evil that we don't always see, but that it is there, and how imagination can be both the reason for your fears, but it can also be the remedy for your fears, in which you start believing you can do something, and with that you start fighting everything you feared before. So I really like the main ideas of the book, I just feel like the execution was a little messy sometimes and problematic as well. I've also seen an interview with Stephen King where he says this is not one of his best novels and although I haven't read a lot of his books at all, I've read this one, Pet Cemetery and Misery. I would say that this is his worst one probably, it is definitely my least favorite. I loved Pet Cemetery and Misery, I think those are brilliant, but this one just felt very... I don't know, sometimes it felt like it wasn't well thought out or edited for some reason. Obviously context matters, this book was also written a long time ago, so hopefully Stephen King has changed a few of his storytelling slash language method, I hope. I haven't read any of his modern novels, but I like to believe that he has improved on that aspect, because at least I don't think that the person he is now, or that he seems to be from what I see around, I don't think the person he is now would write what he wrote back then. So I, I don't know, I guess I had too many problems with it for me to say I actually liked it. I enjoyed a big part of it, but Another thing is, I was more disturbed and disgusted than I was scared and 
I was hoping for it to be the other way around, you know, I was hoping to feel more scared and freaked out and instead I was just very uncomfortable sometimes reading this, so I'm not sure it was the most enjoyable experience, but it did have some good points, it had a lot of bad points and if you'd like to hear more about both of my but also Kira's thoughts then of course I will link the live show for you to watch. This unfortunately cannot count for the tea leaves readathon because I didn't feel finish it on time exactly. I finished it um, the day after so I had just a few pages left but that's okay because of course I did finish our group book A Lesson in Vengeance which again I was not a big fan of unfortunately. I gave it two stars. I just felt very bored reading this one. I didn't hate it or anything and I can see why people would enjoy this one but unfortunately it really wasn't for me. It, however, counts for all the reading prompts, so I ended up finishing all of the reading prompts just by reading this book because it is, of course, our group book. It also has nature on the cover, it has somewhat some creepy vibes, I could say, and it also is set during fall in a few parts. However, I did manage to finish another book and that one was amazing. I don't think I've even mentioned it on this vlog, have I? I can't remember, <laughs> but I did start reading it and I did finish it a couple of days ago. It was amazing and it is The Bloody Chamber by Angela Carter, which is a collection of dark retellings of fairy tales and it is amazing. I am actually going to count this one for the creepy vibes prompt and also for the set during fall prompt because it is just perfect for this time of the year. It was very captivating and beautifully gothic and atmosphere and grotesque as well and Angela Carter knows how to write, let me tell you. I could perfectly picture everything in my mind. I could see and smell and hear everything that she was describing and the fact that it is inspired by fairy tales is always a plus for me. My favorite stories were probably the ones inspired by Beauty and the Beast because it is Beauty and the Beast, um, but I don't know, I actually don't know. I think they were all very good. I did enjoy some more than others, hence why it's not a full five stars for me. However, it is very good, I really enjoyed it, and it was the perfect book to read during this readathon because it was spooky, not exactly scary, but it was so engaging and dark and mysterious and just so beautifully written. So I'm very happy I read this one. I do want to read some more books by Angela Carter so if you have any recommendations please please let me know and as for the activity prompts I also think I filled all of them because I did read by candlelight I did watch a lot <laughs> a lot of autumnal movies slash tv shows the main one being of course Gilmore Girls because I always rewatch it during this time of the year I'm currently on season 5 and I still love it with my entire heart obviously season 5 is a very messy one if you know you know <laughs> But I love it with my entire soul and of course I am planning to finish my rewatch soon um, And as for the reading accessories, I mean I always have tea with me and a blanket So I think those count as my favorites for sure <laughs> Overall, I am very pleased with how the readathon went and I just wanted to thank you all so much If you joined us, we do of course have a live show discussing a lesson in vengeance and also how the readathon went for everyone It was on Sophia's channel in case you'd like to watch it It is always so much fun and it was wonderful to see all of your updates If you did participate in the readathon, I would love to hear which books you've read But even if you haven't, let me know which books you've read recently and loved recently If you are currently reading any spooky books as well. I do plan to read some more because I'm also currently participating in Gothtober, of course, which this book counts for as well. It counts for the monochrome cover because it is black and white, of course, and actually it counts for the big friendship group prompt. So that's perfect, I would say. 